I'm sure you know, but electroacupuncture is the application of, a, of an electrical current, a pulsating electrical current, and that turns out to be important, to acupuncture needles. It's definitely not the passage of a steady current, uh, which would be essentially electrolysis. We're not taking anybody's hair out here. And of course, the reason why electrolysis works is because electrolysis destroys hair follicles. So direct current beyond a certain level is damaging to tissues. And I think this is what makes us nervous about using electroacupuncture units is we worry that we're going to similarly damage our patients, give them a nasty zap at the very least. It was developed as a convenience uh, to replace the need for constant stimulation by hand. Somebody could go ahead and put their acupuncture needles in and then hook them up to a unit and walk away in the full confidence that the desired stimulus to those needles would keep being delivered even if the electroacupuncture unit was left on for a couple of hours. In fact, that's commonplace. For example, if you are in China and you have a gallbladder attack, it's commonplace rather than taking your gallbladder out to just sit you down with electroacupuncture unit attached to some needles which uh, of course interface with your gallbladder and have you sit there for a couple of hours and see if they can just de-inflame the gallbladder that way as opposed to going ahead and doing more invasive procedures. So it accentuates and sustains the effects of dry needling. It doesn't do anything that ordinary acupuncture doesn't. It just accentuates what ordinary acupuncture does and has it maybe last a little longer when I talk to people about acupressure versus acupuncture versus electroacupuncture, I basically say that they differ only in terms of how long they last. And if you're going to treat something with acupressure, well, then I treat owners or mothers how to do that several times a day uh, in order to kind of get the same persistence of effect that you can get with uh, one decent electroacupuncture treatment. So in electroacupuncture, frequency is by far the most important determinant of success. Uh, nothing else matters as much as the frequencies that you select. What frequencies are we talking about? We're talking about how often that current pulses. Nerve endings respond best to currents that pulse, that vary, that, are, that alternate, rather than being a steady, sustained current. That's why we use AC currents as opposed to DC currents. If you have an electroacupuncture unit, you'll know. You put batteries in it, which uh, produce a DC current, and yet AC current is what comes out of the machine. You can't use DC currents for electroacupuncture really because the body doesn't respond to them uh, that well, and I'll explain why shortly. So it's that little electrical current that then stimulates the nerve, that little pulsing electrical current that stimulates the nerve. And you can deliver the two different frequencies to the same nerve and get two completely different effects, which is really part of the magic of acupuncture we can produce the same sensations of pressure as if you had stuck a needle in there, even though uh, you aren't wiggling those collagen fibers. Apart from the initial needle insertion, everything else afterwards is done using the pulsing electrical current. And when uh, that current becomes palpable, it oftentimes becomes palpable as pressure sensations, even though the collagen fibers aren't moving. So the current is directly bypassing the need for collagen's involvement, but the body still thinks that collagen is involved the de chi sensations are oftentimes the same. Why does it work? Why can you depolarize a nerve using electrical current? Well, in case you've forgotten your basic neurophysiology, the inside of a neuron is about 70 millivolts to the negative compared to the outside of that neuron's plasma membrane. That's the resting potential of a neuron. And of course, the neuron fires when that nerve depolarizes, when that polarity is gone, when the, uh, there is no uh, negative distribution of charge inside the neuron. So we talked about various stimuli to pull that off, that uh, one of them was uh, uh, chemical stimuli, adenosine from fibroblasts, that's just one of many ways of triggering that depolarization. You can immediately realize that if you introduce a little tiny amount of electrical current to the outside of that 
neuron to basically, if you put the electrical current right here, well, then you'd have an even distribution of charge, wouldn't you? You'd have negative on the inside, you'd have negative on the outside. And the nerve is then technically depolarized, and presto, our action potential then spreads all the way up the nerve. So that's how essentially electroacupuncture works, is it essentially creates the depolarization just by introducing a little negative charge.